Lastly, today, I just want to share a few quick thoughts about a story that broke last night uh, through pretty crazy terms. Uh, a Supreme Court decision was leaked. This actually never happened before, um, but given the intense nature of the decision, it's not surprising in today's day and age. Uh, Justice Alito's seeming majority opinion that would overturn uh, Roe versus Wade and then Casey, uh, which was built on top of that, which said that uh, a state could not restrict the right to abortion, that it was a equal protection in all states type of law under the 14th Amendment and privacy, uh, might be overturned. Uh, so, Again, not in the legalese. What you will likely hear a lot is Roe versus Wade is likely being overturned. I want to give you some facts because those might be hard to come by in the coming days. First, we don't know that Roe versus Wade will be overturned. This was a leak. The actual opinion has not come out. That is what will interpret the law. Um, and so this has never happened before. I don't know how the Supreme Court is going to um, respond, but we don't know the actual decision. So... Something might change, though. Kind of the second thing is those like myself, I, I was a political science major in college. I love the Supreme Court. Um, those who have kind of been aware have expected this type of decision, either a 5-4 or 6-3, depending on what Chief Justice Roberts, they'll likely side with the more liberal wing on this, and it'll likely be a 5-4 decision. So this doesn't really come as a shock to anyone who has been watching the court. Um, both pro-life and pro-choice sides have been kind of gearing up uh, for a post-Roe America and what that then means. So what does that then mean? Because you're going to hear a lot of political conjecture, and here's what it factually means. This is not pastoral commentary. This is what this would factually mean. If, if Roe is overturned by the Supreme Court, abortion rights and the decision to whether allow an abortion or not would then return to each state. So abortion would not just be uh, outlawed in America. For example, California has already come out and said that they will never outlaw abortion. In fact, they're trying to put a constitutional amendment in to protect the right of abortion. The state of New York has done that thing. And so they're saying, hey, this is a, a fundamental right and we will protect it at all costs. You have more conservative states that are saying we will protect the unborn child at all costs. And so we are going to outlaw abortion. So what this means is that abortion will return to the state houses rather than being a nationalized type decision. In addition, the Congress could pass a law guaranteeing the right to abortion. They just never have. And so they've always played the political football with it, not wanting to do it. But what you'll likely see is specifically Democrats uh, in the House and Senate, because they control both the House and Senate by very narrow margins in the Senate and the presidency, saying we need to pass a law. If they did that, it, there would be a national guarantee to the right of abortion. And so what the Supreme Court essentially is likely doing, if the decision holds that was leaked, is returning it to the states. And then states could decide this is what Ohio decides is its access to abortion, either none or restricted or all. And then the Congress in D.C. could, if they chose and actually got their stuff together, which who knows what they'll do, could pass a law. And of course, you'd have many vocal opponents of that and many vocal supporters of that. I've tried to just give you the facts of what's happening right there because you are going to hear a lot of commentary over the next few days. You're going to hear a lot of vitriol over the next few days. So those are just the facts of what's happening. And I hope you trust me in that. I want to give you a little bit of commentary now. This is Craig's pastoral and Christian commentary on what has happened. It will come as a surprise to none of you that I am a pro-life pastor, that I believe that God uh, designs humans and puts them into their mother's womb, that it is a child inside the mother, that it is not a fetus, that it is not something that could be a child, it's not a potential child or a potential life, that it is a life, and the Christian church is called to protect that life from birth to natural death, from conception to natural death. And so I am excited about this decision, and you may disagree with me. That's okay. But here's what I want you to know. This really shouldn't change anything for the church, and here's what I mean. The church always must be a place 
of grace and mercy for those men and women who have abortions in their past. So we must continue to offer the grace and love and forgiveness of Jesus if they have an abortion in their past and they, that is something they made that choice to do and maybe they walk in great shame or maybe they don't really know how they feel about it. The church must be a place of grace and mercy for those men and women. So that can't change and it shouldn't change even with the overturn of Roe. In addition, the church must be for the orphan. We must adopt. We must be in foster care. We must support those who adopt and are in foster care. And a narrative you'll hear in the coming weeks, which is just factually untrue, is that Christians only care about babies being born, but they don't care about them afterwards. But the actual statistics are that Christians adopt at double the rate than non-Christians in this country and foster care at nearly double the rate as non-Christians in this country. And so you'll hear this line, and it's, it's just simple talking point that is not based in reality, but it must continue to be true of the Christian church. And I would argue all the more, as abortion may be restricted or overturned completely in some states, that Christians must be for the orphan. So we must consider deeply our role in foster care, our role in adoption, and how we support those things as a church. In addition, as a church, we must continue our work with the Pregnancy Center here in town, supporting men and women who find themselves in crisis or surprise pregnancy situations. We must be there for them to provide parenting classes, to provide diapers and formula once the baby's born, to provide free ultrasounds. That is a ministry near and dear to many of our hearts. Our own church administrator, uh, Patty Fees, runs the Pregnancy Center here, and so that has been something we've supported for a long time, and we will continue to support because those resources will still be needed for men and women in our community. I guess what I'm trying to say is no matter what the Supreme Court decision, you and I still have the call to love people like Jesus, to bring the grace and mercy of Jesus to people, to be for the orphan, to be for the child, to be for the preborn child, to be for the pregnant woman. And there will be a lot of people who tell you, you can't do that. Um, I guess my encouragement is to block out the noise and to keep trying to walk the way Jesus has called you to walk, to love everyone, to stand in truth, to proclaim that is a child worthy of protection, but we can walk alongside in grace, mercy, and love with all people, and that ultimately God is the judge of all things. Uh, I encourage you to pray for our country. This will once again become something that I believe causes massive demonstrations at uh, best and and people exercising their right to free speech. Um, But as we've seen, a lot of times demonstrations become far more than that. And so pray for our country, certainly pray for the Supreme Court, liberal and conservative justices. Um, This is going to be an incredibly passionate issue. And so I would just encourage you to watch your tone, watch your tenor online, uh, try not to engage in flamethrowing wars, but just continue to try and love people like Jesus would. So I just wanted to offer a few factual things and then just a bit of commentary. I know a lot of you will hear a lot of different things, but it's hard to know who you can trust. And I hope in these circumstances that you can trust your pastor to try and bring you some facts. And then, like I said, the rest was my commentary. You're free to disagree with that. Um, I believe God's grace is big enough for us to disagree, but uh, I just wanted to offer some of those today. So just a few quick announcements and a few quick thoughts on a major, major decision and kind of a watershed moment in our country.